In this video, we're going to cover how to make spline controls to control your rig. And we're not really going to cover how to have them control the rig so much as just cover how to make various types of splines for controls. Um, so I'm going to cover a few different ways that I go about making my controls. Uh, one of the first ways is I could use text. So the simplest way to do uh, make text is just go to create text and you can go in here and uh, if I click on the little box off to the right it brings up in the options here and I could type in whatever in here and I could choose the font that I want uh, size of size is kind of relative because you always scale it afterwards but type in whatever and it kind of gives a preview down here and I don't know, let's say Tahoma is the one I want click OK create and I have text there um, now, if you noticed, uh, if you've ever created text before, you've probably seen this, they're, they're all separate objects, so each one is its own object, and it's actually a little bit interesting if you go in and look in the outliner. They're all separate up. They're, they're in their own groups to group each letter, and then a group for the whole word. Um, now, there are ways that we can combine this all into one. I'll, I'll get in that into just a little bit later. Um, but Text is one of the simplest ways to start to create controls. And a lot of time, I'll just make a single letter for something, um, you know, you know, S for shoulder sometimes or something, something like that. So uh, that that's one way you start to make it. And something I, I just want to point out uh, when I'm making controls, um, to me, when when I'm making a rig, it's one of the more artistic things that I'm doing um, because. You're trying to make simple shapes that are easy to read to tell them apart from one shape to the other, um, but also making them easy to select. They don't clutter the rig too much, so it's an interesting balance you achieve there. So text is one way I can do that with a simple shape, or you know, even even different uh, icons. You know, you know, they're you know, I don't know, use, want to use a hashtag or a dollar sign. Um, you know, there's various other symbols you can start to use and, and type in that would be fine for making controls out of. Um, so I'll get into a little bit of how to combine those into one object uh, in a minute here. Um, let's go over some of the other ways though first. Um, and one of the other ways is I could just make a spline curve. So if I go down here to uh, CV curve tool, I'm going to bring on the options because there's a couple different ways. So uh, there's linear, which let me go ahead and click some stuff out in the grid here. Oops. Um, oh, it's already on. So I've, I've got grid snap on up here, so I'm just going to snap the grid as I'm clicking. And you'll notice I get nice tight corners when clicking out there. Um, linear is going to give you a straight line from point to point to point. Um, now there's also uh, cubic, and there's some others. But linear and cubic are the ones I usually use. Um, so I could click out some points here, and you notice nothing's showing up yet, just these brown lines, until I click on a third point. So after I get past three points, that starts to make up a curve, and it, it starts to round out the shape. So this is a way I could start to make curve shapes. And sometimes when I do this, what I'll do is, if I need to go to a point all of a sudden, what I'll do is I'll click out three times in the same spot, and then I could keep continuing my curve that way. So if I need to do something around, pointed, around, pointed, that's one way I can start to do that and, and build a control out of that. Um, so that's kind of useful, but I really don't need flat shapes. Um, you know, I, I like to have three-dimensional shapes because we're working in 3D space, and I want something to be seen from any angle and not something that when I get a certain angle starts to be really hard to see. Um, so what I'll often do is trace a polygon object. So this is what I usually do for my feet. Um, Let's go ahead and bring this up. Oops, 0.5. Up off the ground. And I'll just model a shape here that I kind of want to go, you know, if it was around a foot, this might be the shape that I'd use. So I'm just, you know, I'm using my move tool, I'm using my scale tool. Uh, you know, I've got the bottom on the, f the bottom plane of the floor because, uh, you know, that's where I want the center point. Um, and you know maybe I'll angle a little bit, a little bit more like a foot. You know maybe the the top tapers in a little bit just to to help define the shape again because 
again, this will be with other controls, so you want something when you glance at it, you can recognize which control it is, especially when they start to get kind of all tangled together in certain positions. So that's a polygon. Uh, I could use this for a control, but it'll block out my model. It'll render with the model if I'm rendering it. Uh, the reason I'm using splines is because they don't render in scene. Uh, they're easy to see through. Um, you know, they, they don't use a whole lot of processor power. So that's what they're, they're great for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down V here. Uh, if you look up here, I'm going to hold down V. So I'm pressing the V key right now, letting go. Pressing, letting go. It's toggling on point snap. So I could just either have this on, but I prefer to hold down V because then I remember to turn it off and it doesn't screw me up later because um, I still have point snap on and I don't realize it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start tracing out. Oh, I'm going to go back. And, and if you hit delete, uh, that'll undo your moves. It's like undo while in the middle of making an object. So uh, I'm going to switch back to linear here. I want a you know, corner box. But uh, undo won't work while making a shape. You know, I could hit enter, complete my shape, and then hit Z and it'll undo. Um, but if I want to, you know, if, say I miss a point and whoops, I didn't mean to click there. I hit my delete key on my keyboard and it just undoes that last step. So again, I'm just holding down V, and I'm tracing out. So V is point snap. It's snapping to the vertices uh, of the polygon. And I'm just tracing out the shape. And if I go over the same spot twice, that's that's fine. You know, I try to not do that too much, but you're always going to have to do it some. And I am just tracing out the shape and trying to make sure I have all the edges. So uh, being in flat-shaded mode here without uh, edges displayed, by edges, I mean going in here to, to having wireframe turned on. Um, is a, a nice way to kind of tell if I've already covered a spot or not. And if I look at this, it looks like I've got all the edges there traced. In which case, I could just delete this polygon object now. And I've got a nice box here. And you can do this with all sorts of different things. You know, it could be a sphere, whatever you can make and trace. Um, you can get really complex doing this. Not that you always need to, but if you want to get fancy, you can. Uh, and trace out some different shapes. So again, that's create CV curve tool um, and just clicking out something and, and you're tracing a polygon object. Um, so the other thing I'll sometimes do is uh, make some nerve objects and combine them. Uh, and, and this is where I'll, you know, I'll start to talk about combining different objects the same way uh, you could with text. So any, any curve you could do this with. So here's the circle, and uh, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. And, and this is the type of control I usually make for my wrists. Uh, right, so I'm duplicating that circle again and rotating it 90 degrees in that direction. And we've got kind of this spherical control now that we have, but it's still three parts. So the first thing I need to do is freeze transformations. Um, when I combine this object, it's going to look at the relative space of everything else. And so because this is rotating 90 degrees, it would, it will, it will just ignore that when we combine this. So it would all go back to being flat and it wouldn't look like this if I didn't freeze transformations. So basically you just want to make sure everything's zeroed out in here. Not, not that you go in and zero everything out, that you do freeze transformations and it's zeroed out in the position you want it in. Um, you know, so the scale should be at one. Um, so once I have that, um, so there's there's two parts to every Maya object. This is getting a little bit under the hood, but you'll notice whenever you see you click an object, there's NERB, like here is NURB Circle Two and NURB Circle Shape Two. Uh, the way Maya thinks of it, everything in, in Maya is node based, um, and we can see some of this in the outliner of you know here's the node, the NURB Circle. If I turn on shapes and unfold this now. Well, there's actually this shape that's parented under this NURBS circle too. And what's going on is this node right here contains all the transformation data, all, all the attributes that we add onto it, and, and so on. Um, and this is just geometry. Uh, th this is just whatever, this, you know, if it's a polygon, NURB, curve, whatever. Um, that's just geo. It doesn't have this information. All that information comes from this node. And you can actually parent these uh, under each other. Now, if I try to do it that way, nothing nothing happens there. Um, you, you see, we just move the objects around. For some reason, you can't do it in here, even though you can see the shape and you can see the the, the node above it. But we can do it with MelScript. 
Um, so I could actually put this shape under here, or, or actually what we'll actually do is put them all under uh, NURB Circle 1. So I'm going to do a little bit of mail script here. Parent dash shape dash relative. And we're going to start with the thing we want to parent it all under. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and trim my outliner so I'm only seeing the, the whole object. So NURB Circle 1. And then I'm going to take the shape node from NURB Circle 3. Paste that in here. And the NURBS circle shape 2. And paste that in, uh, in the mail script bar. So the, we have just the name. So NURBS circle 1. So that's if, if we're going back into our outliner and showing shapes. If I go look at all these, I'm taking, I'm saying take this node and parent this shape and this shape under that node relative to its space, and that's that's why we had a freeze transformation. So if I go ahead and hit enter down here now, oh, I did it backwards. Let me reverse that. Sorry, shapes first, then group. Let's try that. There we go. That's more like it. You see they're all under one object now, but when I click on it, it shows up like one thing, but you see all three shapes underneath here. So it let me do that again and do it in the right order so you guys see that right. But parent dash shape dash relative. So shape means you're taking the shape node. Dash relative is a flag for saying relative to its space. Uh, there may be a way to do that without freezing transformations. I just don't happen to know what it is off the top of my head. Um, but we're going to take these NURBS shapes again. And you can either grab them in the outline here if you go to display shapes and turn that on, or you can do it in your um, channel box. It always displays under here, no matter what viewing mode you're in, in your outliner here. Uh, and I can just grab NURB Circle 2, copy the shape name, hit a space, paste it in there. Uh, and for those of you who aren't familiar with MailScript, uh, you won't enter this till you hit the enter key on your, your number pad. So you could you hit space, you could hit enter. Um, you could do this in this mail script window too. Uh, doesn't matter where you're doing it. So actually let's go ahead and do it in here too. And then we're going to grab the, the group node, the top level of the shape. And I'm going to put a semicolon at the end and hit enter on my number pad. And I'm going to learn how to spell relative right. Uh, Good example, actually, for this. If you've done something wrong, it'll spit out red down here, tell you hopefully what you did wrong, and you go correct it. Uh, hit enter again here, and there we go. So we've got one object now. Again, you could do this with text. You could do this with multiple uh, spline curves that you've built, and you want to combine them into one thing. I'll, I'll sometimes do that with like eye tracking icons of building pupils and eyes. Uh, so it's one control, but multiple parts. Um, so if I move this around, rotate it, it's all one object now. Um, so just different ways of making curve controls. But so again, that, that's one way we combined uh, multiple splines there. Uh, to go back to the beginning, we can make text and make those controls. Um, we could make our own spline curve however we want. And we could even trace polygons to make our own controls. So, you know, make these look however you want, and then begin to trace them to make your nerves controls. Uh, you know, Maya doesn't really care how you do it. Oh, by the, by the way, here, here's another thing. So I missed in that case, I could just hold down my middle mouse button and drag this to where I want it after I've placed it. Uh, whichever one is the cur you know, the last one I've placed, but if you miss, you don't have to completely start over. So just different ways of building the same thing, and then I, you know I could parent these all together if I wanted to. Um, so hopefully uh, that covers some of the basics for you guys on how to make controls. We'll cover more what to do with these um, as we go into rigging more parts. But 
uh, just some of the basics to cover so you know, you know, how are you getting these controls? How, how do you make this one thing that looks like multiple pieces into one piece? Um, so on, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, you just focus on rigging, make a nice looking control, and add it to your rig. So uh, hope that helps, and we'll cover more in following videos.